Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And somebody had asked me a question in the YouTube comments that this transit happened in my particular house. This planet transited here, this planet transited there. But this event did not happen in my life. Why? So many times people think that Venus transits seventh house, they will get married. <laughs> or Venus transits the ascendant, they will meet some uh, uh, prospective partner or maybe some member of the opposite sex or the thing that if Mercury enters the fifth, then they will have uh, connections with too many people. They think like this. But why does it not happen? And when does it happen? Okay. So, the reason is because the dashas are not permitting. Okay, So then you have to always find a coherence in astrology. If you cannot find coherence, all your predictions are useless. All your analysis is useless. Okay, So what is the meaning of coherence? Coherence means you have to see how everything is fitting into the larger picture. Okay, So for example, if... Uh, if, if your horoscope denies you marriage, so if your Mahadashas back to back, they are denying marriage, then it doesn't matter where your planets transit, what not goes on in the horoscope, you will not get married. Okay? And similarly, if the Dasha lords are indicating, Dasha planets are indicating marriage, then it doesn't matter where your Rahu, Jupiter, Saturn or Sun, Moon is transiting, you will get married. Okay. But, uh, so suppose uh, your dashas are indicating marriage and your planets are transiting 6th house. So then what will happen? Now 6th house is the denial of uh, marriage. Okay, so what kind of a scenario is this that your dasha planets are indicating marriage and your transits are denying you marriage. Okay, and transits can never overpower dashas. Transits are not competitors to dashas. Okay. Dasha is the boss. He's the big, big man. He decides everything, what happens, okay? And transits, they just uh, deliver the results. Transits will tell you um, how that event literally manifests in your life. So, for example, if the Dashas are indicating marriage and you, uh, you are in a position to get married now, but then suppose you have, you know, Sun, Mercury, Moon, Venus transiting in the sixth house during the day of your wedding, then what happens? How does it manifest? Well, it's very simple. Then that day will be uh, the, the sixth house, although he's a denial for marriage, because it's 12th uh, from the seventh house of marriage, but it is also the house of uh, workload pressure and all this, okay? Work stress, basically. So it could happen that uh, you would have taken holidays for your wedding, uh, mostly even. And then uh, suddenly some work comes up that day and you are like running here, running there. And you are like, oh my God, it's my wedding. But because the dashas are indicating wedding, the wedding will happen irrespective of whatever happens during that day. Okay. So now suppose your dashas are indicating marriage and uh, your planets are transiting the 6th house or the 10th house, which uh, deny marriage. Then what uh, planets means? Uh, the uh, planets like Sun, Mercury, Venus. Okay. Then what happens? The day Moon will transit, the 2nd, 7th and 11th. One of these three, that day you can get married. So that's how it happens. So you don't have to keep waiting uh, if your dashas are agreeing to marriage. You don't have to keep waiting that when it will happen, when it will happen, when it will happen. Okay. It will happen. Even when moon transits these houses, it will happen. Okay, And even you don't have to see moon's transit also. Even if your moon is transiting the sixth house and there are like five planets tucked up in your sixth, then you can still get married because the dasha is agreeing to that. Okay, But it will be very stressful, the event, uh, because these transits are in the sixth. And suppose your transits are happening in the fifth house, then it will be very nice. You know, fifth house represents... Uh, relatives, fifth and ninth, okay, relatives and people who you like. Fifth house will represent people who you are very much attracted to, not physically, sexually, romantically necessarily, but 
friends can also be the fifth house your relatives can also be the fifth house anybody in this world fifth house is the only house where anybody can come inside <laughs> Not only your uh, spouse or your relationship uh, partners or your children, anybody, your guru can be the fifth house. Your husband, your wife, your mother, father, son, daughter, friend, relative, neighbor, teacher, anybody can be the fifth house. All right? Now, if your dashas indicate marriage and the fifth house is going, uh, planets are transiting your fifth house, then what happens? All your favorite people will be there in the wedding. All your best friends, your most favorite relatives, your cousins, everybody will be there. All the people who you like, you see. Mm -hmm. That's how you know how transits work. And suppose now the opposite is happening. Your dashas are denying you marriage. Suppose the dashas are indicating the 6th or the 10th. And uh, your Venus is transiting um, your 7th house. Okay? Then what will happen? Then it means... 6th and 10th. These are houses of war. So it could happen when Venus transits your 7th. If the Dashas are indicating 6th or the 10th. Then you go to your office. And then suddenly you find some uh, colleague from the opposite sex. And then if you are a man then you could meet a woman. Or if you are a woman then sometimes you can also meet a woman. Because Venus also... Venus in general represents lady. So for it, for a lady, it can also be a lady. Okay, Venus also represents sisters. Suddenly you, uh, you, you, you might uh, talk too much with your sister. I have seen. Okay, especially for ladies, I have seen this happening. But for men, generally, it is some member of the opposite sex. But now Venus will transit every year to your seventh house. Okay, but does it mean that every year you will keep getting married? No, no, not necessarily. <laughs> it means that you will have interactions with members of the opposite sex. That always happens when Venus transits your Lagna or the 5th or the 7th or the 11th. I have seen that always for everybody. Some kind of interaction with the opposite sex you will always have. But the question is, what is the fruit of that interaction? Are you interacting like a colleague? Or are you in a re relationship? Or are you married? What's the end result of the interaction? That has to be seen from the dashas. That you cannot see from the transits. Okay? Because then every, every year Venus transits 7. Why don't you get married every year? year okay? Every year uh, this sun will transit your 10th house. Why don't you keep getting a promotion every year? No, you might get sometimes, but not necessary that every year you get a promotion. Sometimes in one year you may get two promotions, three promotions. Or sometimes in three years you may not get a single promotion. Why? Because the dashas are not indicating that. So now suppose your dasha is not indicating promotion. And your son transits 10th house. Then what happens? Then you will make an appeal for promotion. Because son is transiting the 10th house of name fame. So that area has become lively. So it's like you send a request to your boss or to your manager for promotion and then bang on, it's reversed because the dasha is not agreeing. Okay? So that is how you know uh, when transits will affect uh, you positively or when they will not. Okay? Um, for That could be for any area of life, not only marriage or career, for childbirth or for any area. Okay? So similarly for pregnancy, for ladies, if... Uh, the dashas are indicating the 5th house, 2nd house, ninth house or 11th house. These 4 houses are houses of childbirth. Then you might get pregnant and you might deliver. But suppose your planets like Jupiter, Rahu, they are stuck up in the Dustanas during that entire 9 months. You know, suppose Jupiter is in you know 6th and Rahu is in 8th, Saturn is in 12th. Well, let's take an example. And during your delivery, you know, all these you know planets like Sun, Mercury, Venus, they are also in the Dustanas. They are you know locked up, jam-packed in the Dustanas. Then what happens? It's very simple. Then the delivery will happen. If the Dasha is indicating successful delivery, it will happen 100 percent Nobody can stop you. But because these planets are transiting in difficult houses, the delivery will be challenging. But the end result is you will be able to deliver. There is no compromise with that. Okay, so do not think that 
um, if planets are transiting my sixth house, I will never, I, I won't get married. Do not think like this. Okay. It could happen that you might have to manage more of the wedding. You may not have people who are helping you to manage that wedding. In 5th house, it's the opposite. 5th house is the 12th from the 6th. So it's relaxation. It's like you're just resting. You know? And then people are coming and telling, oh, you, you should do this, you will do that, do this, do that. And then you're like, okay, nice. Life's good. That's how your wedding will go. Same, same is with career. If, um, if, you are, uh, if your dasha is indicating promotion and then your planets are transiting the sixth house, then that promotion can require you a lot of hard work and effort to get through it. But if it's in the fifth house, you'll be like, okay, you just put an application and you get it. And if it's the 10th house uh, or the 11th, 11th especially, then you don't get a promotion. The promotion comes and gets you. <laughs> Somebody calls you and says, oh, uh, Mr. Sir, my dear madam, uh, here's this promotion. You have worked for this many number of years. So now here's the promotion, you see. Or maybe you get an offer from some another company. Or if you're a businessman, you get a new opportunity for business. Okay. So that's the power of the 11th house. But the, but the thing is, that has to be indicated in the dasha first. Okay. If it is not in the dasha, it won't happen in the next thousand years. <laughs> All right. So therefore, once you check the dasha and then you see for that particular event so for example if your dasha is indicating marriage check which are the houses of marriage the second seventh and eleventh when are prominent planets transiting these houses especially venus and sun and venus especially for marriage okay so when they transit the second seventh or eleventh and the the prerequisite is dasha is indicating marriage and then suppose you are running uh, venus saturn Okay, Venus is in 7th house, Saturn is in the 2nd house. Let's take some very simplistic examples, not to complicate you. Venus is in the 7th house of your bhav chart, Saturn is in the 2nd house of your bhav chart. So, Venus Mahadasha, Saturn Antardasha. It is a positive time for you to get married and you apply time, place, circumstances. Deshkal Patra. In India, maybe you are 25 plus. Then, yes, we could claim that, yes, this is a time for you to get married. You might get married in the next three years. Venus, Saturn, three years approximate. So, between 25 to 28. So, now, between that time, Venus, Saturn, you see uh, when will, uh, so suppose you are a, a Capricorn ascendant, for example. Okay. So, then uh, your second house is Aquarius. For Capricorn, the second house is Aquarius. So that means when Sun, Mercury, uh, Venus, or especially when Sun, Venus will enter Capricorn, you no, know, oh, sorry, Aquarius for a Capricorn rising, then the marriage can happen. Yes, that's how you decide when marriage can happen. Okay. Similarly, for career, if the planets are transiting the 10th house or the 11th house, that is the day you can either sign the contract or get the news of the promotion. Or you join the company that day, or you get your first payment. Something has to happen in these days. All right. So therefore, this is how you know when when does a transit actually give you results and when does it not? All right. So the problem is you see the transits and then you keep checking, oh, this dasha is here. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to check dashas. Vedic astrology runs on dashas. If you know dashas, you know Vedic astrology. If you don't know dashas, you do not know Vedic astrology. It's very simple. All right? Because I always keep getting people who tell me that, oh, sir, my Saturn is transiting in second house. You know, I didn't get married. Uh, Jupiter is transiting the seventh. I still didn't get married. Rahu transited the eleventh. Yet no marriage. And then I'm like, did you look at dashas? And then this person is like, oh, dashas, what are they? <laughs> so therefore, if you check the dashas, only then you can predict using transits. Otherwise, your predictions will be, it won't work. And even if it works, it's just your good luck that it worked. It's not based on science. Astrology is a science. Jyotish is a science. Science means there are a set of procedures which you follow, which works for almost 90-95% of the cases. 5-10% exceptions will always be there. But for most of the cases, for 10 cases, nine case, for 10 examples, 9 times it should work. 1 or 2 times it may fail sometimes. Okay, 
and if it is applied properly because it's a, a science from the scriptures it works not 90 percent it works 100 percent okay but the problem is we do not know how to interpret it properly so we blame astrology we say astrology doesn't work okay the the fault is not with astrology it is with us who do not know how to interpret it properly okay so therefore do not jump into conclusions like so simplistic as i said you know venus in seventh saturn in second it doesn't work like that there are so many things you have to go down to nakshatra Ashtagvarga. so many things are there it's a very deep science okay only then you see transits and then you predict somebody will get married or will get a proportion or have childbirth this time all right thank you very much for your patience and if you're new to the channel please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me you will find it down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him